Companion diagnostic means that you have to have the test in order to give the drug. Um, and this is a term that we've known very well. There are companion diagnostics for targeted therapies. And there is a companion PDL1 test that you have to have. You have to be PDL1 positive to give pembrolizumab or Keytruda. So that's, that's a companion diagnostic. We've been very familiar, that term has been in our lexicon for quite some time. Complementary is very new, and many of us as trying to understand what this means. Nivolumab does not need a PDL1 test based on the data that showed a survival advantage in all patient populations in squamous and in adeno. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the PDL1 testing is not required but it's recommended. My interpretation of what a complementary test is, is is that it's not required, but it's recommended. A companion is you gotta do it if you wanna give the drug. And this is, we're still trying to sort out these definitions. Um, there's a lot of complexity with these two drugs given that one requires a companion diagnostic, one requires a, you know, one is complementary. Those are my interpretations of what those two, but I imagine if you asked other medical oncologists, they may tell you something different. The complementary test gives a little wiggle room to the physician uh, because it's not required. And if a patient's PDL1 is positive, there's no doubt that those patients are going to respond. But if they're negative, that doesn't mean that they're not going to derive a benefit. So the question is if you have a test in which, if it's negative, um, it still may mean that the patient's going to respond, why would you test in the first place? And there have really been two sets of camps that have come out within medical oncology. Some medical oncologists say, look, I want to make sure up front I know what the chances of response with this drug are going to be, so I'm going to order the pd one testing. If the pd one testing is greater than 50%, I know with Keytruda, based on the data, that the response rate is going to be in the 40 to 45% range. Um, however, if you look at the response rates that are um, in some of the data in pd one negative patients, it's also somewhere between 20 to 30 percent, depending on what platform is used. So in my mind, in my practice, is not ready for prime time. I do not routinely test for pd one for my patients, given the fact that even if they're negative, there's a chance that they will derive a benefit. If they're positive, yes, that will define for me patients more likely to respond, but I would hate to exclude a patient from getting these drugs based on a test if negative doesn't mean that they're not gonna derive a benefit. Um, there are other people, however, who think that it's important to do the pdl one testing on all patients because it helps to find those patients more likely to respond. Um, an issue that's not talked about much is how much tissue we have left. So we have to do molecular analysis on the tissue. Sometimes the tissue is a, a fine needle aspirate, so there's not a lot of tumor content. I've got to do that first. Then if a patient's part of a clinical trial, I have to, go, I have to make sure there's tissue available for that. And then I have to make sure that there's tissue available for pd one testing, which generally is only one or two slides, but sometimes our tissue procurement yields very low tumor content. And so we have to be judicious and sort out uh, in terms of relevance where our tissue goes. Molecular testing has to be done, that's first. If they're going on a clinical trial, at least in my center, that's next. If there's room or there's tissue left over, yes, maybe to consider pdl one testing. And I think that's a lot of what people are thinking about is you know, how, um, how we have to be careful with tissue allotment based on the competitive needs from different diagnostic platforms.